Let my people go. The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Hello brothers and sisters, this video will be a little more um, based on my personal revelation that I have received from the Lord and I will label this video you know, right up front an, an opinion video um, because it's more just me talking to you guys about some of the stuff that I'm seeing and, and kind of contemplating some of the mysteries with you guys and I like to do these videos every now and then because it, it makes us think outside of the box. Before I start this video. I'm going to give you guys an update on some of the things that have been happening to me. I know that it's been a while since I've made a video. I've been pretty attacked really, really hard, brothers and sisters, lately. Not only by the enemy at night or and during the day when I'm trying to sleep, but um, also, you know, just in life in, in general. You know, he's been coming at me really hard. For example, um, I try not to talk about this stuff online, you know, but like, I'm coming to the point where my rent's going to be due. I have zero rent money. Um, my internet bill to even make videos. I don't have the money for my internet bill. I'm running out of food. You know, 
and it's really hard for me because I go completely off of faith that the Lord will take care of me and provide for me, and He does. He really does. Um, and I feel really bad when I kind of have to bring that up to you guys, you know. And I've only think I've only talked about this twice on a video, but if you are able to help at all, brothers and sisters, um, to be able to keep me going, you know, to keep me in a place to live and to keep me, um, you know, this internet on, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of good things here at the channel, bringing souls to Christ, and and we're bringing up a lot of the mysteries of God that that you know that He's been showing me and showing you guys. And I just love the fact that we can come together and and relate our our stories and some of the stuff that we're all seeing together and kind of compare. And we put all these pieces of the puzzle together. Lately, my attacks have been severe. I was watching a video a couple days ago, and it was from Sister Susie. I believe her channel name is God's End Time Warrior, and she was talking about, and I'm kind of summarizing, but she was, you know, seeing things about the fallen and aliens and all that, and and she was saying that she was told in this this dream that the fallen were greatly in Louisiana, and again, one of those things where your mouth kind of drops because that's where I live in Louisiana, and I can verify and confirm that they are here for some reason very abundantly. She also mentioned near New Orleans, and I live a hour southwest of New Orleans so you know she was confirming to me that they are heavily in Louisiana for some reason today I'm going to share a few things with you guys that I really haven't shared yet again I'm telling you guys I'm labeling this an opinion video right up front because I know a lot of you don't really like the personal revelation dreams um, you know but this is something that I wanted to do because I personally you know I'm kind of been alone all my life most of the time and I don't like holding things to myself if I don't have to and lately, the enemy has been attacking me more than ever, so I really could use you guys' prayers, like to pray for me that, um, for extra strength and for extra angelic protection from the enemy and from the fallen, because, um, and I'm not gonna say I'm this or that, or, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, and I'm not saying that, you know, all of it's true or all of it's not true, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm seeing and let you make your own decisions, but um, lately, when I get attacked by the fallen, they, they do two things when they're attacking me extremely hard, they say we have finally found one of the two witnesses. He has come out of hiding and they're attacking me and they're saying this to me. And I remember I told you guys a while back that I keep having the two witnesses dreams about being one of the witnesses, but I don't think I am because it doesn't really fall into what I'm seeing as far as leaving the remnant back. But it's kind of coming together now and the Lord's showing me some things. And I'm not saying I'm anything. I'm just going to share with you what else they're saying. And the second thing is what I've never shared with you guys. I've heard the Lord say to me a few names that some of us have actually been on multiple missions and I don't know how that's possible, whether it's through time change, but, or whether it's from, I don't know, maybe angelic spirits can go on missions, multiple missions for the Lord. I'm not sure how it's done. I don't know, but all I know is it's done. And one of the names that I, um, I'm always called and showed by the Lord is I'm called the Apostle John. I don't know why, I just am, and I'm about to share with you guys some of the dreams and visions and confirmations that I keep getting. Um, so when they're attacking me, they're, they're calling me these two things, and they're like really severely coming hard on me, brothers and sisters, like, look, like one of you has come out of hiding. Um, if we can get rid of you, you know, they can have a big victory. And I was kind of blown away because I was watching Sister uh, Rhonda's video a few days ago and she made a video. Now, I don't think she even watches my videos. Um, so she doesn't know much about me. And if you guys know, if you've watched, watched me from the beginning, you know that I live in an, an RV pool trailer. You know, it's kind of like a little cave, the Lord, you know, little bridal chamber cave, the Lord like he hid me in to prepare me for the things that he has me to do coming up here and she had a dream or a vision about the two witnesses and she says in her video that she saw that they lived in rv pool trailers and i was like are you kidding me i was like how many people are having dreams about being one of the witnesses and they live in rv like these pool trailer type you know like living spaces i'm like i've that's unheard of. So it's, it got me thinking and it got me reflecting on all the other dreams that I've been having. You know, the first thing that really got my mind thinking, brothers and sisters, was an experience that I had that was not a dream. I wouldn't even call it a vision. It was so real. It's as if the Lord took my spirit and he took me to his time and I stood next to him. And when I say I stood next to him, it's as if I was really there. I saw the grass moving. I saw the sea or a lake behind the 12 apostles. 
I saw the 12 apostles, I scanned from the left to the right, and he focused in my eyes on the apostle in the middle. I could see what they're wearing, their robes, their, their beards, how they look really kind of nappy, you know, like they haven't had a, a facial haircut in like years, you know, and I'm looking at them and he has my eyes focused in on the middle and they're moving around as if I can reach out and touch them. And I know it's the Lord, the Holy Spirit's there. He's talking to me, Jesus is talking to me, and he's showing me this great mystery and he looks at me and he says, and he focuses my eye on the middle apostle, the apostle in the middle. And they're all looking at me as if they're lining up for a picture or something. They kind of have their arms on each other's shoulders. Like they're all excited, like seeing, like they're, if they're seeing some kind of great mystery as well. It's almost as like if they could see me or something, it was really strange. And Jesus looks at me and he says, guess who one of them was? And when he says this to me, to me I knew what he meant in my spirit and my mouth dropped. You know, he was, he was saying, guess which one you were. And, and from that, all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, he had relayed a great mystery to me that not only have I been here more than once, but that, that I was indeed John. I'm like, I believe, I don't know if it was the last mission or not, but I know that I was John and I'm about to read some scriptures to you and show you some other things. And from there, I have little things that would happen. Like he'd show me two men in visions and dreams that look like the two witnesses. And then all of a sudden they disappear and I hear John. Okay, then another one, I, I was at the garden, um, uh, I mean the Mount of Transfiguration, and, and I know that only James, John, and Peter were there. Okay, so I started thinking to myself, before I knew it was John, and I said, okay, well, it has to be James or John. The reason I say that is because I had another dream on a whole nother night where the Lord tells me, he goes, um, he tells me that I was a son of a uh, son of thunder. And okay, so that gave me a big confirmation, right? There are only two sons of thunders in the Bible. That was James and John, the two brothers. One night, and I'm telling you guys all these different dreams and visions. And one night I'm laying in my bed and as if the Lord starts to talk, to talk to me, you know, and he says, John, my best friend. And so he says that to me. And I'm like, wow, Lord, are you trying to tell me something here? Like, this kind of stuff, I, people think I'm crazy if I go online and would, would say something like this. So I keep this stuff to myself. Um, and it's not the only person that he's told me, brother. So there's more, and I will not say that because this is already probably too much for most people who watch videos online to understand and to comprehend. Um, and so I've seen things like I've seen myself in the the in Pentecost. I see myself in the upper room more than once. I've seen that I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I started to, to praise God. I've seen myself, like I said, at the Mount of Transfiguration where I've seen Jesus lifting up into the air. I saw Jesus call me as an apostle and I saw him tell me to go invite these two other guys and I saw, at least, I saw that, I think I saw their faces. I know I saw one face for sure in his beard and Jesus told me to go call him, like from Jesus, you know, to go invite him to be one of the apostles. And so I'm seeing all these things and I'm having dreams and visions and where they're saying, you know, is that the apostle and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, I'm not remembering all the different dreams and visions I had off the top of my head, but they're a lot. You know what I mean? If God confirms things in twos and threes, once he comes to you and he shows you something 10, 15, 20 times, okay, you got to make a decision. Am I going to believe that God can do anything and what he's telling me is true or do I deny it? and say, well, you know, it just can't be. Because I know Jesus said that if I tell you earthly things and you believe not, how are you gonna believe heavenly things? So i am always been the type of person, brothers and sisters, where I believe Christ. I don't care if people dislike me, they think I'm crazy. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I don't, I'm not afraid of man. I fear God, because he is the only one who can, you know, bring my soul to hell, the only one. I had asked for another confirmation a few nights ago, and I'm, I'm kind of laying in bed, you know, and. Well, you know, at one point I asked for a confirmation. I don't remember the exact night, but I'm, I'm laying there and I don't even listen to music. I listen to Christian music. That's it. And I'm laying there and all of a sudden a song pops into my head and I got to get up and I got to look it up on my phone, see what song it is because the Lord's been giving me messages and phones. I mean, not phones, but in songs. And I looked the song up and it's by Savage Garden. So I look at the garden. I'm not going to go into this in this video, but there's more about the garden and there's more about Adam and Eve that I, I'm not going to tell you guys about. Um, not for a while anyway till I have the go ahead with the Lord. But in this song, he says, I, I, I loved you before I met you. I dreamed you into life. Then he says, 
I found my best friend, you know, brother, you know, brother and sister, Jesus, John is supposed to be the, the disciple that, that Jesus loved. Like he, he would lay his head, his ear on Jesus' chest and he would just to hear his heartbeat, like they were really, really close. And so it was like another confirmation. I found my best friend and all this stuff. And he's not only me, he's told friends of mine, sisters that have, that have had dreams and visions to where they have said the same exact thing to them um, confirming. So I'm not going to go too far into that, but what I'm going to do is read you a few scriptures. And the first one I'm going to go, go into is in Revelations 10, 10 to 11. And it says, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This was, was being said in Revelation to John the Apostle, John the Revelator. Now John died in the, at the island of Patmos and he never got the opportunity to speak again to nations and kings and, and people. So I'm saying to myself, well, okay, well, you know, Jesus doesn't lie. Whatever he says comes to fruition, it comes true. So John must again somehow be back on the earth to do this very ex same exact thing. And I've had dreams and visions where I was in, um, the aliens were invading the earth in these pyramid triangles with these circles in the middle, like windows kind of like one little circle window in the pyramid. And I was in front of the president and, and generals and all that. And I was kind of like, um, helping them kind of like an Old Testament prophet would help them to deal with it in a godly way. You know, kind of like God sending Samuel to, you know, to talk to whoever, you know what I mean? It's kind of like what was going on. And, and so again, we turn to Matthew 16, 27 to 28, and it says, for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, Jesus says, some standing here. And he's talking to his apostles and the people, his disciples there. He says, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, Jesus said 2000 years ago, which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his glory or in his kingdom. Now check this part out. Jesus didn't mean that they were going to live 2000 years and just not die. You know what I mean? He didn't mean that. But what he meant was that some that were there with him at that time period would be alive on the earth right now and would not taste of death and be raptured out of here. This scripture of what I'm telling you is in the scriptures in more than one place. But again, read Matthew 16, 27, 28. Jesus says that some that were standing there with him 2000 years ago would be alive right now to witness his coming. So how is that possible? If, if man can only come, if certain people can only come once, then how is Jesus saying that they'd be again here right now? Now, also, if you turn to John 21, 20 to 22, it says, Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, which is, he's talking about John, following, which also leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? You see, well, right here he's talking about, you know, who is the servant who was betraying, which is Judas. But then he goes on, and Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So Jesus, again, in a confirmation scripture is saying here, when Peter asked about John, first I guess he's asking about the enemy, I mean not the enemy, but Judas, uh, who was, you know, possessed by Satan. But then he goes on and he says, well, what about John? And what about this man? And Jesus says, if he is to tarry until I come again, you know, the rapture, second coming, what is it to thee? You follow me. So Jesus confirms it here. Now, this next one I'm going to share with you is pretty exciting. One time I told you guys, if you go and you find the videos to where I spent two nights in heaven pretty much and I made two videos about it. I was flying through the air and I was with... And all of a sudden I was going, I saw seven levels. There might be more, but I particularly saw seven levels. And I thought to myself, well, I guess the, only the archangels can go through all seven. And as I said, archangels, two of them popped up and said, here, like they're here, act two archangels. And I'm like, oh, cool. You know, I'm fine with the archangels. And all of a sudden we're on top of these, we're up way up high and all over the levels. And they have these glasses and they put these glasses on and they become pillars except they were pillars except they could see at the top 
out the top of their um, out of the pillars, and they were looking down, and they were trying to see if you know if all was well, all was at peace, you know what was at war, you know they kind of like was overseeing everything, and I was the third one there, and they looked at me and they said, "Put yours on," and I was like, "I have like the archangels were telling me put yours on," I was like, "Oh, so I have glasses," and like yeah, and so I'm I'm there and I put my glasses on and I become a pillar, and I'm looking. And I say, I see all the seven levels, and I say, all the levels are at peace except for level six. Now, if you guys remember, remember level six is the level that I've been having dreams and visions that I've been hearing that I would inherit land there, inherit something there. Like that was kind of like, like in the spirit, I somehow was fighting at that level a lot because that was gonna be like my kingdom or something. I don't know, it's really hard to explain to you. I don't wanna go in depth on that in this video. Um, but many times in my dreams, uh, the angels would tell me um, that the mist of the tents have fallen into Jacob's hand. Jacob is the name that the Lord has given me now for my next mission. And he has shown me that whatever kingdom that I'm inheriting is at war right now. And I knew that from this previous vision, the only level that I saw at war was the level six. Um, level six. So, which is really neat. If you go to Galatians 2, 8 to 9, it says, for he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, who was Peter, and John, there's three people here, remember I was telling you about the three, me and the two other guys? And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, received the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So we're seeing here that there's three of them, James, John, and Peter, who's called Cephas here, which means the rock, I believe. And so he's saying that they, they seem to be pillars, those three. And here I am, you know, months before that, having a vision of being with two archangels and we put these glasses on and we become pillars and we see all the different levels. Isn't that kind of neat? So it's kind of like it was a huge confirmation to me because um, it was actually saying it right here in these scriptures. Now, I want to share one more scripture with you to show you, um, to give you a confirmation that what I'm saying to you is possible. If we turn to Matthew 11, 13 to 15, we read this. Well, first of all, I'm going to set the scripture up for you guys. A lot of you believe that Elijah, whose also name was Elias, um, when they talk about John the Baptist, they always say, well, he was had the anointing of Elijah, or they make something up like that, but that's just passed down church doctrine. Um, that's not what the Bible says. See, John didn't know who he was. John didn't know he had any connection to Elijah or Eli Elias. But Jesus said to them um, in Matthew 11, 13 to 15, for all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, Jesus is saying to his apostles, if ye will receive it, this is Elias. He's talking about John the Baptist. This is Elijah, he's saying, Elias, which was for to come. He that, come, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus didn't say, well, if whoever can receive it, he has the anointing. No, he didn't say that. He says, if you will receive this, he's saying, if you have ears to hear, then listen to what I'm telling you. That this very man, John the Baptist, Jesus says, is, the word is, Elias to come, is. He didn't say the anointing of or this and that. He said this is, is Elias. And think about this. So that would be the tw second time that this man, and I believe it's because he had an angelic spirit. I really do. I believe there's a difference between uh, the spirit of man and, a, and an angelic spirit to come down and are incarnated into man's spirit. I mean, that kind of gets deep, and I don't want to go into that. That's my opinion. Um, but when we get here, we think about this, and that would have been, Jesus said he, he is. So uh, so if we believe the Bible, Bible, that is the second time Elijah would have came that we know about. And then we believe that Elijah is supposed to be one of the two witnesses, right? So if we believe that, that would be three times that Elijah would have came on missions. And no, I am not a believer in reincarnation for those of you who get to misunderstand me. I don't believe that at all. But what I'm telling you is that nothing is impossible with God. Yes, man is only given the man to live and die once, but we don't really know what that means to, before he's judged. We don't know what that means. First of all, man. But I've been shown that some of us, not all of us, some of us are angelic spirits. And I know that's kind of hard for you to understand, but I've had many visions and dreams of there being classrooms in heaven, and the Lord gave tests, and he chose some of the brightest and most powerful angels 
to, were given the opportunity to be redeemed and to partake of the same blessing that the, the humans, I mean, that man did. And they entered their spirits, just like the spirits of man entered into fleshly uh, bodies uh, to, to live just like man lives. And we're given the opportunity to become like in the image of God and to be redeemed and to become joint heirs with Christ because I've also been told that I'm a bride of Christ. So I know for a fact that that some of the angels were given the opportunity to become as man because I was told that and shown that, you know, so. And then there's something really exciting I'd like to talk to you about besides that. And that's something else the Lord is showing me. You know, I, had a, I have a friend who at one point had a, a vision where she was praying and she's like, there's something about me and Jason that, you know, I don't know what it is, Lord, but it, what, what is it? And she went into a vision and she saw the Ark of the, the Covenant. Um, and she saw a Moses staff by it and she saw like, you know, the two cherubim angels. And so I started to think about that and I started to go more into that. And, and then, then I started to think, as you'll notice on the picture, if I use the picture that I'm, that I should have up, if the, if the two angels and Jesus kind of in the middle, look at how I could overlay it. And you see the two, you see the, you see the two, um, olive trees who are the two witnesses who stand at the left and to the right of the Lord. Many times I've had dreams where the Lord has said, come stand by my side. And for some reason I said, I will be here at the sixth hour, I'll stand by your side. So I still don't know what that means. At the sixth hour, I told him, does that mean at the end of the 6,000 years? I don't know. And the two olive trees who are the two witnesses stand at his right and to his left. And this is what's really interesting. We'll start by reading in Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches which, which through the golden, two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he said unto me, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now we're reading here that they are two anointed. What, what else do we know about in the scriptures that we call anointed? I can give you an example right now because I've had dreams to where I've been called by an angel and anointed cherub. Now that sounds funny too, but I'm talking spirit before even coming to the earth. All right, most of you know who the Lord has revealed to me I was before I even came to the earth. And when we think about anointed, we talk, we talk about cherubim. Now when we talk about cherubim being anointed, and you look at the Ark and the Covenant, there are two anointed cherubs who are have their wings touching. And if you can imagine, just like the picture you see on this video, you can overlay them, right? The two olive trees are two cherubim, I believe, my opinion. And it's just like the top picture where you have the angel on the left and the angel on the right and Jesus in the middle. It's the, basically the same picture, but it's different symbolism. And so we can go on from there and we can read in 1 Kings 6, 23 to 28. Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood. So before we're reading that the two witnesses are you know, or they're, they're, they're made of, they're, they're olive trees, right? So now we're reading that the two, like I was just saying in 1 Kings 6, 23 to 28, that, that King Solomon made the two cherubim out of olive wood. And the two witnesses are made from olive trees. Are you seeing what I'm saying? I believe these two witnesses, I believe one is Raphael before he came to the earth. Now Raphael would be John and would be whoever else the Lord sent him to be. I don't know who the other one is 100% yet. I have my guesses, you know, but, and this is the same thing. Whatever my friend, my sister, she prayed about what there was about me and her. And, well, and you know, it's for some reason, we don't know exactly what it means yet, but she saw two cherubim, the Ark of the Covenant, and she saw a Moses staff by it. And that was the vision the Lord gave her. And so I'm going to continue on reading. Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood, each 10 cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits and the other wing of the cherub five cubits. 10 cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. And the other cherub was 10 cubits. Both cherubim were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was 10 cubits and so was the other cherub. Then he set the cherubim inside the inner room and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim so that the wing of the one touched the one wall and the wing of the other cherubim touched the other wall. And their wings touched each one another in the middle of the room and he also overlaid the cherubim with gold. 
So this is just my opinion, but I just feel like I, it's been revealed to me that the two witnesses, even though they came to the earth, and one I believe is the spirit of John, and one might, he, he might have been on another mission where he was Moses or somebody else or Adam or whoever, you know what I mean? He, he, what I'm trying to say is I believe that certain certain warriors of God have be, have been on multiple missions. I really do believe this is what I've been shown. And that's why I'm leaving this, uh, an opinion video in case I'm ever wrong, but I don't think I am, brothers and sisters. I've seen way too much of this. I've seen way too many confirmations from the Lord to 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 not believe what I've been being shown. And, and just like I just showed you that Elias was John the Baptist, Jesus said, this is Elias, this is Elijah, Jesus said. So when he comes again, is it gonna be Elijah of old? No, it's gonna probably be somebody like us who is Elijah, but just doesn't know it yet until the Lord reveals to him that he was here before and that he is the spirit of Elijah. That is personally my opinion and what I believe the Lord is trying to show me. So when I'm seeing all these things, brothers and sisters, and, and I'm, I'm, I want to believe it, but then I'm like, man, this just seems too extraordinary. You know, then a couple of days ago, like I said, I was watching one of Sister Rana's videos and she's saying that she's seen the two witnesses and it was like they're in a pool RV. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like, I don't know anybody else besides me that is having these dreams that online who's talking about being in a pool RV, you know, a little trailer that pulls. I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? And, and lately, that's what I've been trying to tell you guys. I'm under such attack by the enemy, brothers and sisters. I really need your help. I really need your prayers because when I'm attacked, they tell me things like one of their witnesses has been revealed and they want to kill me. They pretty much want to kill me. And so they're attacking me and they're like sending armies about me. And one time uh, Jesus gave me a song and he and part of the song was there's a thousand angels who dance around you. You know, so there there's like a war going on. And I believe that, you know, that some of us are coming out of hiding because the bride is hidden. Um, and I had another one last night. And I know some of this sounds so, so strange, but I passed the test. Um, I passed the test that we were taking and my grade was a 23. Now, you might think, oh, that's a failing grade, but that's not what it meant. 23 has been revealed to me to mean man child. So it had a dream where it said, you pass the test, you pretty much earn a 23. And a 23 is what the Lord told me months ago, symbolized the man child. So a lot of mysteries, brothers and sisters are, are being made known. Um, you know, some of us who we, even though we don't really know each other in this life, we could have been brothers and sisters before. We could go to heaven and realize that we were blood brothers or sisters before. I mean, so many mysteries are, are, are being given to us. And, you know, I know that all things are possible with God, that nothing is impossible. I know sometimes, um, you know, I, when I tell you guys these things, I know sometimes I get messages from those who are a little more new age and they think that I agree with their new age teachings because some of the things I say sound so far-fetched, but I don't. You know, if you, if you wrote me, you know, because the first thing I would do is I would try to talk you out of believing like new age stuff. You know, it's one of my pet peeves is is is, is, is trying to get those who um, believe in, in these kind of, kind of doctrines to not to. But it's a fine line sometimes because, you know, the enemy will give us a lot of truths to give us a lie. And so I'm telling you to take everything I say to God. And, you know, when you pray about things and you hear something in a dream or a vision, never accept it when you hear it one time. Because the enemy will give you a lot of things one time because he's given me a lot of things one time. But until the Lord gives you many confirmations, you know, he would tell me who I was before. And I, I mean, I'm up to like 50 on one who was before I even came to the earth. And and I went up to like 20 before I even believed it. You know, and the Lord said he confirms things in twos and threes. But a lot of my brothers and sisters, I see they hear something one time and they run with it just because it sounds cool. You know, but don't do that. Turn to the Lord and let the Lord show you all that you need to know. And for some of you, it's not, I mean, really, it's not important who any of us are. Really, the only thing that's important is Christ, to keep our eyes focused on Christ. But I personally, my personality is I get really excited over this stuff, you know. I love the deep doctrine. I love revelation. I love to hear the mysteries and all day long, all night, all I can think about is Christ. All I can think about is how much I love him and I miss him and I want to be with him. And it's like I'm addicted to Christ. I love him so much. And brothers and sisters, I know you do too, and I and I, I, I implore you please to be baptized. Be baptized by full submerged in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. This is very important, brothers and sisters. Jesus says that, that whoever is not born of the water and of the Spirit cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And you might say, well, what about the thief on the cross? Well, first of all, we don't know that he wasn't baptized. 
And second of all, there are many heavens. They're not just one. The kingdom of God is different than Abraham's bosom, you know, or this paradise or that paradise. There are different locations, but Jesus says in the scriptures that if you want to live where the Father lives, you have to be baptized by water and, and by fire. So, so we need to do such things, brothers and sisters. We need to be re repenting of our sins. We need to... Um, we need to realize that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There are many making videos now claiming that, that, you know, that there's more ways to heaven besides Jesus, that you can be a Buddhist, you know, all you need is love. You can be, um, you know, Hindu and with their thousands of gods, you know, and you can be a uh, whatever that as long as you're, you have love, you'll go to heaven. This is not from God. This is of the enemy. There is but one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. One brother I was talking to earlier um, said that he had a vision from Jesus and Jesus told him that we're all our own personal savior. And for those of you out there who believe that, please know that that is not Jesus. In the scriptures, Jesus says himself that he is the only savior, the only one who can save your souls. In him, besides him, there is no other savior. You know, we are to do the things that Christ tells us to do. We are to follow him. He is the staff that on which the righteous are to hold themselves up with. He gave us the perfect example and said, come, follow me. He gave us the example of how to live. And he said, be holy for I am holy. You know, we are to repent of our sins and turn from sins. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. The Bible says that to believe, even the devils and the demons tremble and believe. But what is the difference? The difference is your fruit. If you truly believe in God, like Jesus said, if you love me, what does he say? He doesn't say you just say the words. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and you will feed my sheep. That's how you prove, uh, that's how he proves his, um, your love to him. He said that to, to, to Peter three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Just to make the point of how serious it was. That if you love me, Jesus was saying, you will keep my commandments and feed my sheep. So I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that if you truly love him, you will do such things. Then if you truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, you will have the evidence of that belief. What is the evidence? You will have the faith, you will have the works, you will have, call it whatever you want. We are judged by our works, brothers and sisters. This anti-works movement is not of God. Yes, we are saved by grace and we are judged upon our faith, but I've been shown in heaven from God that we have to have the accompaniment from our faith the fruit to go with it, the works, because one without the other will not work. Ultimately, yes, we're saved by the grace of God, but just like we have to show our faith um, in Christ or our love to Christ by keeping his, his commandments and feeding his sheep, we have to show our faith in Christ by changing and actually repenting of our sins, turning from sins, uh, living a new life, becoming a new creation in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. Time is pretty much up. I mean, the door is shutting. Christ is here. I've done had two, three, four, five different things come to me the last few days where I've heard the Lord say that I am above the earth. He is above the earth. I really believe he has told me that he is above the earth. I heard him say he is walking on the clouds. He is above the earth. So brothers and sisters, he is here waiting for that right opportunity, maybe for you. If you're listening to this video this day, maybe he's waiting on you to get on your knees and to surrender your life to Christ and say, Lord, I forgive me my sins. I turn from them. I love you. Please, I invite you in to be my personal Lord and Savior. I give, I surrender my life to you, Lord. What is your will for me? I will do. Um, help me, Lord. I need your help to turn from whatever. Whether you have a problem with masturbation or, or watching porn or whether you have a problem with um, not forgiving someone or, or from hate or from, from doing drugs or whatever the problem may be, realize that this earth is but the blink of an eye. This is the time of test and probation for you. You one day will wake up and this life will be like a roller coaster ride. It was fast and furious. And what you did right now depicts your glory and where you are forever. We're not all the same in heaven, brothers and sisters. Those who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. But those who bring many to righteousness shall shine, shall shine as, the, as the stars, as the sun. They'll be brighter. They'll have much glory. And, and I, for one, don't want to be as that firmament where you can barely see that little light on the distance. I would might like to be so bright. It's like that sun rolling over the earth that lights up everything. You know, I want to give all to the Lord. He loves us all the same, brothers and sisters, but you are judged according to your works. Please turn to Christ. 
please turn to God because he is the only way that you can go to heaven. The lake of fire is real. It's eternal. It's forever. Hell and all its contents will be thrown into hell forever. This place is real, brothers and sisters. Not only have I seen parts of hell, I've seen parts of heaven and I've seen Christ. I've seen many things I've been blessed with. Uh, praise God. He has shown me many things so I can come to you and say, I no longer have a faith. I, I hope these things are true. I'm coming to you this day and saying, I know it's true. I've seen it. I've seen parts of heaven. I've seen parts of hell. And believe me, when I looked upon hell, it was such frightening. I mean, I was at like one of the places that wasn't as bad. And I seen people as zombies walking on these dead streets with just misery and pain and screaming and crying like they were being tortured spiritually, brothers and sisters. And it's not a place you want to be, really. It's eternal separation from God. It is the second death, eternal separation from God, and it's not want what you want. What, what eternally separates us from God is sin. Sin it separates you from God, and you can never go to heaven. God keeps a clean house, and no sin can enter heaven. That's why the fallen and the fallen angels cannot go back to heaven, because they sin while in heaven. And that's why hell was made for them, brothers and sisters. It was not made for you. But you will be there unless you surrender your life to Christ. And believe me, if you're in hell looking up and saying, what did I do? You're only here like a roller coaster ride, like the blink of an eye, and you didn't choose right. You messed up your time of probation. You, you chose the world. You chose the enemy. And believe me, what you do now, it, surrender yourselves to God. Completely give it over. Brothers and sisters, your time is about up those of you who are living hard lives you can surrender your life right now to god get on your knees and say those things surrender your life to him and guess what the rapture could happen tomorrow or next week and you would still make it because you chose at the last moment to surrender to god and so brothers and sisters you know you could be doing yourself a huge favor in avoiding tribulation hell on earth people eating each other people raping each other people killing each other uh, bombs, asteroids, nukes, murder, the mark of the beast. I mean, these things are about to take place. And you could avoid all this and be eternally with Christ, feeling an everlasting joy. I felt the Holy Spirit when I was up there one time. It was so strong. I joke around with you guys. Uh, it was like having 10 shots of ecstasy placed in your body. And it was like, ah. Oh. It's like so much love was there, brothers and sisters. I couldn't even keep my eyes open. It was like in total ecstasy and this is what you could feel forever if you would just choose this day to serve the lord i love all of you so much and i say to you directly that today today me and my house we will serve the lord and i say these things in the name of jesus christ amen paul said the holy spirit tells us clearly that in the last days some will turn away from their faith they'll follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons these people are hypocrites and liars and their consciences are dead. Paul said there is going to come the preaching of another gospel and they're going to invent another Jesus. It's not the Jesus I preach to you. It's not the Christ that I know. There is creeping now into even some evangelical churches, this new gospel of accommodation and tolerance it's a Christ that they have invented in their own minds, and these are educated people, and it sounds, it sounds good because it talks about, a, a, they say the real Jesus, a Jesus of compassion and love, and, and folks, I, I'll stand here and tell you now, I've spent 50 years in compassion and love. This church has been a compassionate church. We've cared for the poor and the needy, and, and we have taken care of orphans and widows. But this new gospel of tolerance is, 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 no, 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 Jesus Christ is such a loving man now. And it is the endorsement of homosexuality, dialogue with Islam to find out how this Christ that we are introducing, this Christ that we believe in, we can have a common denominator. In other words, that Jesus will fit any religion. No, folks, we serve Christ. There can be no giving in. We cannot be entangled in these. There's a new gospel now called the transference of wealth. The most damnable doctrine ever been created in hell that God is going to give all the wealth of the nations now to individuals who have the faith. 
I've heard businessmen try to tell me that this was the new thing. Let me read it. Even if an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what I've preached to you, let him be accursed. Folks, I'm satisfied with the gospel that Paul preached. I'm satisfied with the Christ that he preached. Paul says, do not be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Jesus. You've come in the final day. Me?